Welcome back to Bully Ball, a San Francisco 49er podcast. We have a special guest joining us today from Fordham University. He led the FCS in yards this past year with 1,312. He led in receptions with 103, and he broke school records for career receiving TDs and single season receptions, leading to him becoming a first team AP All-American. We have Fotis Kokosoulis here with us. How you doing, man? Good, good, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate the kind words and introduction. <laughs> but yeah, I, no problem. Doing great. How are you guys? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Uh, so I guess we'll jump to the first question here. You know, a pretty simple one. Uh, did you play any sports growing up? You know, did you always play football? Or were there any other sports that uh, were kind of like your first love? Yeah, so um, – I played football. I grew up in Texas, essentially. So football was huge there. So, you know, that was always the number one. Um, Texas football is crazy, even from little league to obviously high school. Um, you've all heard, seen the movies and stuff like that. But uh, I always played, I played baseball and football were my main two when I was younger. And then I kind of got sick of baseball. I did travel and all that, you know, play so many games so i had a bunch of friends playing lacrosse and um they were like oh you got to come try it you know it's a physical sport you're you're good at that so i was like all right that out so i i tried that and it went pretty good i enjoyed it so i continued playing lacrosse and i i swapped that with baseball um i always did like track i did basketball too um, i wasn't really good at basketball i mean i'm not terrible but not not my best sport um what else i did when I went to high school, I did wrestling. The wrestling coach was like, "Yo, you get, we got to get you out here. You know what I mean? You're a strong guy or whatever. So um, I did that for a year. It was pretty good. I enjoyed it, but I didn't, enjoy, I didn't enjoy the, like, how much you had to be, like, focused and, like, like I was like, all right, it's fun to wrestle somebody, but I don't want to – the practices, the meets, all that stuff. I was like, yeah, I'm not – so I did it for a year. Um, but obviously my main were um, – football and then lacrosse is my second and then i just always did track here and i was actually um i did pole vault i was pretty good at that so um i have my the school's record as a freshman for pole vault in my high school but um yeah so that, that that's about it for the sports so i've been i've been picking up golf recently though so gotcha <laughs> gotta get that golf game right yeah you probably <laughs> Out of all the guys we've interviewed, interviewed, you probably played the most sports. Most guys are just like, oh, basketball and like football, but you definitely beat yeah. that for sure. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I was always trying. All, all my friends doing all the sports, so I was like, you know, you just join up, see what you like. Yeah, gotcha. Do you feel like any of those sports helped you be a better football player now? Like, do you feel like any of the traits from those sports helped you now? Uh, I would say like, Maybe not specifically me. I mean, in a way, yes. Like wrestling is a great sport for, like, I maybe t I'd say like maybe like a D lineman or something like that. Just to because the when the big guys wrestle, they got to use their hands and all this stuff, and like it's it's man to man contact. Like, so that's a good one. That transition. I mean, it still helped me a little bit just in like balance and breaking tackle ability and stuff like that. You know, it translated well. Um, I would only, I would say for lacrosse, the, the good thing about it is like, it keeps you in shape, like you, you're running back and forth. So, um, and, and you're, you're creating, you know, you're still like making moves and, and stuff like that. So it helps with that part of it. But, um, yeah, for the most part, football is its own unique sport. It's hard to, <laughs> you know, translate from other sports, but those are some few things. Yeah, definitely. So coming out of high school, uh, you were a two-star running back recruit, um, but I believe you had like some crazy senior season at your high school. Um, you know, what was your recruiting like and what led you to only being a two-star? Yeah, I would say like it was my size, you know, being running back, I was probably like 165 pounds uh, my senior year. You know, like I started varsity uh, as a sophomore and I was only like 145 like pounds starting running back. So <laughs> I was always undersized and small. So that didn't help with my recruiting. Um, a big thing that did help, though, was 
teams kind of had seen I put up the stats and stuff like that. They were kind of recognizing me. And then I went to the Nike, um, like, invite spark opening thing that they, like, invite you to. And then you run. It's, like, almost like a pro day type thing for high schoolers. And um, I ran, like, a pretty fast 40. I think I was, like, one of the fastest in Illinois. And um, that kind of, like, uh, they were, like, all right, we have his stats. He, you know, we see he's good. And he got – he's pretty fast. So, it's, like, maybe we'll give this guy a shot. And NIU was the first team to offer me. And um, I know, like, one of my friend's dads was um, – played there. So, like, I, I definitely feel like he probably helped out a little bit, like, in, in recruiting me, like – or pitching me to them. Um, but yeah, they saw my times. And I, I, this guy's pretty fast. Like we, we might take a shot on him. And, and when they offered me, I was like talking to a few schools, but I was like, again, this school is like perfect for me. It's close to home. It's the Mac conference. We still play really good teams and the Mac's okay. Like, I think I can do well there. And um, I like the coaches. So I thought it was a great fit. So I ended up committing um, pretty quickly. So. Awesome. Yeah. So that kind of leads me right into our next question. You know, like you said, uh, your freshman year, you attended NIU uh, running back kick returner. and You guys won the MAC championship that year as well, correct? Yeah, we did. So what what led you to transfer to Fordham after that year? Yeah, so we uh, – that was a great year. I was I, – I played – it actually switched me to receiver. So I was the kick returner, and then I was, like, the second string um, re receiver. We had a starting senior who was pretty good. Um, but Coach Harry had gotten an offer from Temple, and so he and the whole staff ended up leaving to Temple. So uh, the new staff came in for that spring ball, and they kind of just, like, mixed things around, like, you know, didn't really give me the opportunity that I was supposed to have based off the previous season. And um, ended up not really going well that spring. And then basically kind of like a bunch of guys kind of just were like, yeah, it's not the same. The co these coaches, we're, we're not vibing with them well and stuff. So we're like, we, we got to get out of here. You know, it's not looking good for us. Um, so, yeah, I ended up hitting the transfer portal. And um, then that's obviously what led me to Fordham. I had a few schools interested, but uh, – Form was definitely the best choice and, and happily it worked out for me. <laughs> so, so you, uh, you made the switch to from running back to receiver at NIU when going to Fordham, you know, what kind of made you stick with that decision uh, to play wide receiver over running back? Well, personally, I would have been rather wanted to play running back, but I like going to NIU, they were kind of like, Oh, we were looking at you more as like a slot receiver just because I my size, I wasn't that big. Um, and then Fordham was kind of in the same boat. They they needed a receiver. That's kind of what they're looking for. They they had some running backs who were pretty decent. So it was like I could have – like I in the recruiting process, I told them I played running back, but it was like am I going to try to fight out like two decent guys already or am I going to just, you know, take the wide receiver spot that's kind of up for grabs. So I just stuck with it, and I enjoyed it as well. So it wasn't bad. Gotcha. Definitely. Uh, so your first season as a receiver at Fordham, you know, you put up great stats, uh, 49 receptions for 621 receiving yards, seven touchdowns, uh, 40 kickoff returns, and 869 return yards. Um, and you ended up becoming first team all Patriot League. You know, did that give you some confidence that you can have some success at receiver and, you know, possibly take that to the next level as well? Yeah, definitely. I, I felt like I gained some confidence at NIU just playing against, you know, the starters in practice. I, I would do pretty well. And uh, that's why I was looking like, you know, it was going to be good for me. And then so once I went to Fordham, I was like, all right, it's a lower level. Like I kind of had like a supreme confidence. I was like, you know, I, I played against higher level guys. So like I know I can do it at this level. And um, yeah, it was it was good. It was a good first year. It was a good um to get my like the bad thing about like going into college is like you, you go from being the, the star guy getting all the playing time and then your freshman year some people get lucky and play right away but like sometimes you don't so it's like that was kind of oh you know I'm not a huge role and then so going to Fordham and 
finally getting to be back in that light um, was nice for sure. But yeah. Definitely. Awesome. So, you know, pretty much everyone in this draft class faced the dreaded COVID season, right? You guys only had three games. Um, you know, was that kind of a blessing in disguise for you because it gave you basically a full year to learn the nuances of a receiver? You know, was it a good thing or a bad thing for you that season, would you say? Um, it was good because I got an extra season out of it, you know? So that, that was great. It's like, all right, we'll, we'll push, we'll play a couple games. We we're kind of learning like a new offense too at the time. And, um, just get a couple games and obviously it sucked to have to cancel the season and all that, but it was a little bit extra stats too, you know, for, um, for my career and, uh, just, just good to play, you know, some guys and, and not completely be done playing for, you know, such a long time, unfortunately because of COVID. But, um, no, I think it, it, and it benefited me also like academically because, um, I'm a biology major, or I wasn't, I graduated already. Um, I got my d degree in biology and transferring over, like classes didn't transfer. So I kind of had to like restart a little bit. So it set me back. So it was like the extra season, like helped me graduate on time. So it was like, you know, a blessing in disguise. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. What do you, uh, what do you, you know, looking to do with your major, being a biology major, because that's a pretty big degree to get. It's not just like a business degree or something, you know. What do you look to do with that? Yeah, I was, I was, um, I was looking at like pre med at the start, but then I was like, you know, NFL, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, obviously, I make it. Um, but then the timeline, it's like, you know, it's a long process to become a doctor. So um, I've been looking recently at PA school physician's assistant it's a lot shorter you know you're kind of right under the doctor but you, you're doing similar things still make a, a decent pay and yeah, the school is is a lot quicker so <clears throat> that's kind of my track right now obviously nfl's first priority see where that goes how long i can take it and then i'll head down that path once i get there yeah definitely that's awesome um so you know this past season you put up some crazy numbers that we mentioned in the intro, you know, 1,300 yards, 103 receptions, as well as uh, 14 receiving touchdowns and two rushing. What do you think led you to have such insane production this last year? Yeah, it's, it's a few things. Like I said, we started to implement that new offense we were running. And so that took a little bit of time. It just has a team to, to gain that like chemistry in running that offense. And so, you know, this season was the season where we were all clicking, you know, on all cylinders. Um, I was kind of sharing reps here and there, like my first like two years. Um, and then so that my se this senior year, I wasn't sharing reps. I was getting all the reps. Um, so that also kind of led to me having a lot more production, you know, getting double the amount of reps I was th the previous season. Um, and yeah, just the, the new offense, our offense coordinator did a great job and he, he really enjoyed finding new ways to get me the ball. And I, I appreciated him for that because it would, it would be games where like I had a big game and then the next team would be like, like really trying to stop me, double team me, whatever they can. And he was like, all right, next game, we got to figure out if they do that, you know, we're going to move you around do something else. So, you know, I, I got to thank him for that one for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, this past season, you were one of only six receivers at the FCS level to ever be a Walter Payton Award finalist. Can you speak on how that feels, especially knowing the last wide receiver that won that award was Cooper Cup, who, you know, we've all seen what he's done in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was a huge honor. I was like a little su not surprised in that I was able to get it, but just like in shock. I, I've been a Bears fan my whole life. And obviously I played running back my whole life. So the the guy that I always looked up to was Walter Payton. He's my favorite player of all time. So it, it was such an honor to be able to just be a part of that. And um 
as, obviously as a receiver who they, there aren't many, you know, it, it's a, it was a big accomplishment for me and, you know, thank God for it. And yeah, it was just really cool. Like I said, Walter Payton, I used to watch, watch his highlights before games, like all that stuff, you know, it was, it was great. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that's awesome. And for the 49er fans that don't know, the Walter Payton Award is pretty much the Heisman of the FCS level. And Trey Lance actually won that award a few years ago for those watching this. Yeah. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about your relationship with, uh, you know, QB, your QB, Tim Demorat? Obviously, he's going in the draft as well and also broke a bunch of records with you. So can you kind of talk to us about your relationship with him? Yeah, no, he's great. I, I love Tim. Uh, I, I remember like first coming to Ford and I was like, the first thing I did was I met, I found it, him on like Twitter or something like that. I messaged him. I was like, Hey, I'm coming to Ford. I'm like, we got to, as soon as I get there, start, you know, throwing, getting used to like being on the field together. So from right when I got there, we, we started just, you know, doing routes on air together. And um, ever since then, you know, it's been great. Like, he's a good guy. He's really funny. If you uh, actually know him, you know, the guys, he's a j big jokester. Uh, gone on, like, spring break trips or whatever um, with him before. You know, he's cool. So that helps, you know, just being friendly off the field helps being, you know, when you're on the field too. Building that trust, you know, he, he's going to trust that. I would be open and or run the right route and all that stuff. And and I'm going to trust that he's going to throw the ball perfectly. And clearly, you know, it showed. So, yeah, it was, it was nice to have a quarterback. That was another thing that I was lucky to go into. I, I didn't know going into Fordham that we had such a good quarterback. So it worked out perfectly, you know, for both of us. Yeah, that's awesome. Um Talk to us a little bit about your game versus Ohio this past year. You put up 13 receptions for 320 yards and four touchdowns. That's insane production, no matter what level it's on. Why were they not able to contain you or make adjustments to stop you? You mentioned that you're offensive coordinator, but just speak a little bit about that game for us. Yeah, I mean, they had – so let's say the first touchdown I had um, – it was just a double move. You know, the guy they had on me, you know, wasn't, you know, I, I made, wasn't their best person to, to be guarding me. So, you know, I kind of burned him on a double move. So they, they couldn't stop that. And and we set it up too. It's like, it was like a, a post go basically. So I was like, we, we set that up a couple times and, and they'd seen that on film before. So it was like, we we're in the red zone. I was like, Oh, perfect. Like he's going to buy on it right now. So, it was a good call by the uh, my offense coordinator, and then um, another a few things they just had a couple. Uh, we would do like stacks, and then we would switch off of it. So one receiver would go like kind of in, the other one would go towards the outside, and they they couldn't figure out to like who they who they had when we did that switch. So one one or two of the touchdowns had like blown coverages essentially because the guys weren't able to like keep track of us. And, um, yeah, just some of the personnel, you know, wasn't as as athletic enough to to keep running with me. So, um, yeah, it was just a combination of that. And for some reason, they just seemed, didn't seem to be able to, you know, come back second half and just, you know, make those adjustments. All right, we got to make sure we switch when they switch or whatever it was, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, I was – that was an awesome game. It it was it was a good one as well because it was against a Mac school, and so I was like, oh yeah, I you know I I left the Mac, and so I wanted to really show that I could, you know, have a a good day against that competition, and I I'm I think I did that. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's insane. Three hundred twenty twenty yards and four touchdowns in one game is crazy. Uh, so looking at your pro day that you went to, you know, you came in at 5'9", 185. Uh, you ran a 4'6", 140 with a 1'5", 9", 10-yard split, 19 bench reps, and a 32-inch vert, 7-second um, three-cone drill. How do you felt like you performed at your pro day? Yeah, I was, I was pretty disappointed with um, my 40, like – before I'd run lasers, 
four fours. I'd run hand time, super low four fours. Like I've hit four four zero before. Um, so it was it was kind of a shock when I when I heard what I got. Um, I ended up running again at Northwestern, um, and I had I get I got a better time. I got in the four fives, which is like a little bit better, but I was still kind of surprised. I was like, I don't know, maybe they just time it a little bit different or something like that, you know. So whatever, I, I I couldn't change it, you know. But um, for the other like for the shuttle, I thought I did pretty well, and I knew it was gonna have a decent time there. My three cone also was a little slow. I I'd hit the six sevens, six eights pretty easily before, but um, they clocked me at seven flat, so it's all right. It's not it's not great. It's not terrible. My bench press I was pretty happy with. I know, um, that's that's a good amount of reps and in my vertical. I've never been like a huge jumping jumping guy, so thirty two is okay. But um, when it came to like running the routes and like doing the receiver stuff, I think I absolutely dominated that aspect of it so but yeah I was, I was disappointed in the 40 for sure yeah because when we were surprised when we saw that too because we thought your game speed you know you were flying so I could definitely see if they you know their timing was a little bit off or just different because your game speed definitely looks like four fours you know so mm -hmm. I, yeah no it's it's tough that's why like I obviously you don't get to go to the um the combine unless you get invited but i feel like if i would have went there it's it's less um error you know chance for error because of the laser so it's it's a better timing system you know there's always going to be error what if the guy clicked it slow or something you know so you know you, you can only control what you can control but um i i just got to keep working i had some local days and stuff like that that i did well at so we'll, we'll see what happens from there yeah, yeah uh, i think that's I think the tape speaks for itself as well. You know, you could definitely see it on your uh, highlights or even just game tape in general that your speed's a lot faster than that time for sure. Mm. Yeah. And even, you know, we, we look at a lot of slot receivers, the 49ers like a certain um, type of slot receiver and someone that your pro day numbers were almost identical to was Trent Taylor, who's now on the Bengals. Um, 49ers drafted him, I believe, in the fifth round a couple years back. He's been in the league, I believe, five years now. Um, so we saw pretty much identical numbers between you two. Mm. But who are some NFL receivers that you would compare your game to the most? Um, a guy that I, I like a lot is um, Debo Samuel. I think just his, his vers versatility and um, – He's a tough guy. He's like breaks tackles and stuff like that. And I feel like that's something I, I strive myself on. Um, one of my all time favorites, you know, he doesn't play anymore, but Steve Smith. Uh, I loved watching him play. The guy's tough as nails. You know what I mean? He's, he wasn't the biggest or the strongest, but, you know, no one could really compete with him. He was just, you know, awesome, awesome to watch. But um, any of those smaller slots, you know what I mean? I, I, I love to try to model my game after, you know, like a Wes Welker or something like that. Danny Amendola, you know, those guys. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I want to keep – obviously going to the NFL, they're bigger, stronger guys, so it's harder to break as many tackles. But, you know, I, I love the physicality of it. So any any player that's like that is someone I like to watch. Yeah, definitely. You know, being a smaller receiver – how do you create separation and get yourself open? Um, and what about your route running ability will help you excel in the NFL, do you think? Yeah, I think my quickness is big. Um, obviously, I don't have, like, super long track speed, you know what I mean? Um, but I think getting better at working my change of speed is going to be big, and I've been working on that recently. Um, but, yeah, my, my quickness – is this is the biggest thing it's like once i make my release or my move and then i'll be able to gain that separation right there and, and i know in the nfl it's like just this much separation is enough you know what i mean so it's like if i can just keep that you know I, there's guys who are just as fast as me or even less quick than me who are in the league you know creating separation so it's just perfect perfecting the technique as well you know yeah, exactly. And 
you know, do teams, when you've talked to teams and stuff, do they still see you returning kicks in the NFL? You know, you have almost 2,000 yards returning in college. And do you think your special team's ability doing that will help you stick on an NFL roster? Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope so. That that that'll help me at, at these local days that I've gone to, I've been catching punts and kicks as well. And, um, the, it's, it's gone great. You know, I've caught every, every single kick. Um, so hopefully I, I showed that aspect of my game, but yeah, I, I want to keep that as much as I possibly can, because like I said, if I can be a receiver and a return guy that they can always fall back on or just a, a main return guy and then, throw my receiver if I can, you know, wherever I can make an impact, I'm going to try to do that. So yeah, I hope they, they, they wanted to see the, my return ability. And I hope that they, they got to see that as well. So, you know, we'll see what happens in these next weeks coming up, but that's definitely a, a, a part of my game that I want to keep um, going. Awesome. Definitely. Um, Emery Hunt, he's affiliated with CBS sports. He has you listed as his number seven slot receiver in the draft. Why do you think NFL teams, or at least the NFL media for the most part, uh, is sleeping on a guy like you? Yeah, man, it's tough. You know, it's tough to have those numbers and, you know, work so hard and then see, you know, people sleep on you a little bit. I think just because, you know, playing at, at the FCS level and, you know, you don't play against the best best guys out there. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. It's, it's difficult. I've seen some guys at the same level get more, you know, action when it comes to publicity and stuff. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, it's, it's difficult to say, you know, I felt like my numbers spoke for themselves. Um, I don't know who knows connections, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things that go behind that stuff, but, um, I just gotta, you know, work hard, you know, put my hands in, you know, God, he's got everything. So, and see what happens, but yeah, no, it's kind of, it was a little difficult seeing, seeing that, but you can only control what you can control. So. Definitely. Um, so, you know, what is one strength of yours as a receiver that you would pound your fist on the table that like, this is what I'm great at. And what is one thing that maybe is your weakness that you think you could improve on? Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I, I think I'm great at is just like making plays and, and being reliable. Like it was, I know my, like some of my teammates would make fun of the fact that like anytime we were in some kind of hole or something, it was like, they were going to come to me to find a way to like get us out of it. So it was like, if we needed a big catch on a third down or something like that, you know, I was kind of going to always be the guy to rely on. So I think that'll translate well into the league. Just having that confidence and that ability will allow me to just, you know, make plays when I, when need be um, at the next level. So that's definitely uh, uh, something I, I've won. Uh, I've had big catches, you know, game winning catches before. So stuff like that, you know, I think it was a couple of years back. It was like fourth and 16 with 10 seconds left. And then Tim throws me a deep ball fade, you know, in the end zone and catch it to win the game. So stuff like that is probably the best aspect of my game. Um, things I need to get better at is working on, like, um, press release. Because playing the slot, I didn't really see that a lot. You know what I mean? Um, so at the next level, I'm sure they're, you know, they're going to be athletic guys who will probably press me. So it's just it's more of just, like, doing it more, you know what I mean? Because I didn't see it a lot. So that's probably where I need to get better at. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, have you been contacted by the 49ers? Um, not recently. Um, I haven't heard from them in a while. Uh, the scouts did know, like, they knew me pretty well, you know, at my pro day and stuff like that. And um, they were – like the guy was that came up to me and talked to me was pretty nice and seemed to, you know, like me and know me well. I know they they may have said like I had an amazing workout at my pro day, but you know the the forty was kind of difficult. Um, hopefully they saw that I ran a better time at you know the next one that I did. But um, yeah, I haven't 
they're they're not the team that I have heard from most recently. So definitely. So that kind of leads me into the next part of the question. Uh, what other teams have you been in contact with, and have they given you kind of like a a round to you can expect to go in the draft, or are they saying a priority free agent? Yeah, um, I've heard from the Bears, um, the Giants. You know, I went to their local days. Um, the Chargers have been in contact with me. Um, and then most recently I heard from the Dolphins. Um, none of them have really spoken to like what, oh, where, where I'm going to get drafted and stuff like that, you know? So um, I know at worst, definitely just a, a mini camp invite. I know that's been said for sure. So I'm hoping I could at least be um, signed as a free agent and obviously drafted, you know, would be great. But I think it's looking more towards, you know, being signed as a free agent uh, than getting drafted. But, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, there, there's always someone coming out of left field, you know, doing something. So I got just got to be ready for it. Yeah. All you need is that opportunity, too, just to get in the league. And then once you get that, doors are wide open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, 49ers actually drafted a guy from Fordham last year, your teammate, Nick Zakil. <laughs> Um, have you spoken with them, you know, heading into the draft process or uh, this off season before the draft or anything like that? No, I actually I haven't spoken to him about that. I probably should have, <laughs> but uh, just to see how it went for him. Um, the last time I saw him, he came to Fordham. I was like back when I was at school, you know, just talked to him a little bit about how, how it is being out there, you know, playing for the 49ers and, you know, just being in that area and he, he enjoys it and liked it. So, uh, but yeah, no, I should have asked some more questions about the, the draft process and stuff like that. I think I was just too focused on the season at the time, but uh, I yeah. probably should reach out to him, see how he's doing, you know, I'm sure he'll have yeah, some good it. advice for me. Yeah, true. That's awesome. And uh, how was he as a teammate, you know, when you played with them, uh, what, what could you tell us about him as a player? Yeah, he was great. He was like a, a good leader, you know, not the the guy who's going to like mother F you, you know what I mean? But he's, he's like a lead by example guy. And then he'll say some when he needs to, but everyone kind of always looked for him, looked to him as the leader of the team. You know, he was big, strong, like he always did the right thing when it came to like training and lifting and all that stuff. So, you know, he was a great teammate to play with. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, he's a great guy. So I, all good things to say about him. <laughs> And I was so happy oh. that he made the the fifty three man and stay and stayed active on the team. That you know, that was great to see. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Do you have uh, any any other questions, Joe? Nope, that's all I got. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. You know, you're gonna have fans enough fans and us going forward for sure. Uh, we wish you the best of luck with the draft and everything that's gonna follow. So uh, thanks for coming on and good luck going forward. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for, you know, having interest in me and <laughs> being fans um, and just asking me all the questions and having me out here. I appreciate it and uh, yeah. have a nice day and I'll talk to you guys. Turn it back.